Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Laurent Ferrier Galet Traveler Cloisonne Enamel Dial of the Mid-Atlantic. You can see and you can purchase this micro-rotor automatic dual-time Cloisonne Enamel Time piece on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high-resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this unique dual time with double direct impulse escapement. Now the watch on my wrist was a 2016 product of a relatively new manufacturer with a name that goes back quite a few decades. Laurent Ferrier, the man, was a complication specialist for Patek Philippe for several decades dating back to the 1970s. A man of many passions, watchmaking, good food, good times, and race car driving. He's a fellow with an eclectic background and former talents, translated for the first time into a watch bearing his own name under his own brand banner in 2010. Six years later, he gave us this. Now, the watch is a handsome and versatile white metal, white gold, 41 millimeters across the round of the case, from 9 to 3 o'clock, sans vintage style onion crown. The watch is not excessively thick, though for a micro rotor automatic, it's not particularly thin at 13.1 millimeters, but you will note just how organic the case form is. It's almost like a smoothed pebble that's been sitting at the bottom of a brook for eons. As a result, even though it's not super thin, the side profile is so continuously sloped, rounded, and domed that any dress cuff will easily slide up and over it. Now from lug to lug, it has a contemporary but not oversized span of 49 millimeters. So I always say that for a wrist 14 to 16 and a half centimeters, a smaller wrist like mine, it's good to keep the lug to lug span under 50 millimeters, and this watch achieves that. Now, another component to the ergonomics is the fact that the lugs do turn down rather dramatically. So when you look at the watch from up top, or you look at it in profile, it drapes itself around the wrist rather than flaring out. That's all down to lug profiling, not just bare measurements. But back to bare measurements for a moment, the watch does take a 20 millimeter standard strap size. So if you want to accessorize in advance, that's what you need to order, OEM or aftermarket. The OEM strap is a delightful large rectangular scale alligator leather in navy blue with a monotone stitch. It's a nice slim unbolstered cut with folded edges and on the underside a delightful surprise that the calf skin that's used is a wonderful and supple suede texture rather than the standard natural grain often used on the underside of alligator straps. Laurent Ferrier supplies a high quality matching white gold pin buckle with a sculpted and contoured profile to add a little bit of artistic inspiration to what's normally an afterthought component, even on many high-end watches. No afterthoughts here, and design in detail is the ethos of Laurent Ferrier on both sides of the watch, as we'll see. The case has that same organic, flowing, continuously rounded form. It arcs from side to side. It arcs from top to bottom. When viewed from any angle, it's tough to capture even a single straight line and essentially it only comes down to the junction of mid case bezel, mid case and case back and then the inner profiles of the lugs. Those are really your only straight lines on this watch. It's a wonderfully fluid form that does exotic and enticing things with light and that's before you even get to the dial. Now the dial has a little bit of a different aesthetic than some of the Laurent Ferrier cloisonne enamels because while it does have cloisonne enamel featuring the image of the mid-Atlantic at center, it also features an outer hour track that is a beautiful slate blue concentrically brushed or grained surface so the circles the satin grain run circumferentially around the dial in parallel in a concentric series radiating out from the middle. You'll also note white gold cordons to separate that hour track from the center dial and superimposed white gold dart style indices. You can see they start on the hour track and then they hang in a beautifully rich 3D cantilevered fashion over the center cloisonne dial. What you'll also note is that the hands at center are matching white gold Laurent Ferrier's signature Asagai style. We can get a little bit closer to see better. They are spear shaped and you'll note that there are twin apertures. One which is a large aperture designed to distinguish it as the reference time zone. So it's a 24 hour format so it'll go from 1 to 24. That is the time where you are not. The time where you are is red at center and that is coordinated with a date window at 3 o'clock. Now many travel time watches allow you to move the local hour hand 
using a push register that is bi-directional and you'll remember this system from many Ulysse Nord N GMT plus minus models. You'll note how the date can be driven in both directions as you jump time zones east or west across the international date line. But the watch has another feature that's rather remarkable because many of the watches that feature a stepping local time in combination with the second time zone only change the date as you move that local hour hand. So you have to do a lot of stepping if you want to change the date dramatically. This watch actually has a conventional quick set for the date. So you can cycle the date in both directions, no less. It is a bi-directional quick set. So not one, but two refinements you typically don't find on dual time watches. About the enamel. What enamel is, is a glass-based or vitreous paint that is applied to either a flat gold base, a hollowed out gold base that has had trenches and grooves dug into it. That's known as champlevé. That is a reductive form of shaped and shaded enameling. And then there is cloisonné, which you see here. That is the practice of taking small threads of gold, very small gold wires, and creating the forms, the outlines of the continent, which naturally also define the outlines of the seas. And then you place the vitreous paint, the enamel paint, into those cordoned areas that you've created to color the land masses. And you use different colors, which you can blend for shading. You also use different levels of depth, so the thickness of the enamel applied can create the shade effects you see on the continents, as well as within the seas. As you can see, some portions of the sea where the continental shelf is present are a little bit lighter, others are darker. This is done by weighting the thickness of the enamel paint used. It's then fired several times throughout the process in a kiln up to 840 degrees Celsius. Several firings and several applications create the dial. The rejection rate is high at any point it can chip, crack, or explode, which is why enamel is one of the most labor and time intensive of the craft arts, which is not to undersell what you'll find on the opposite side of the watch, just as intriguing, beautiful in its own way, and completely distinct as it is an execution of both engineering and art. This is the Laurent Ferrier caliber LF 230.01. It's based on the FBN 229. And as you can see, it has all of the underlying virtues of that caliber. Let's start with the micro rotor. It uses a jeweled staff with twin ratchet poles, so it has almost no audible signature. As it winds on the wrist, you can scarcely feel it, you can scarcely hear it, so it's extremely smooth by design. Moreover, because it is a micro rotor, you get automatic winding convenience without any of the winding bridges or rotor profile that typically obscure even a finely finished central rotor automatic. The Balance beats way at 21,600 vibrations per hour. Energized by the rotor, the watch does have a 72 hour or three day power reserve. It's a free sprung balance for shock resistance. It's also a balance with a slight overcoil hairspring profile at center. The watch is adjusted in a chronometer busting six positions. Chronometers are generally five positions of adjustment. This is a Besson Observatory certified chronometer, so a French certified chronometer. Notable because it is a fully cased up test of chronometry like the Swiss COSC, which is a test of the bare movement, whereas the COSC generally entails adjustment in five positions, Laurent Ferrier gives deviation no place to hide, adjusting in all six standard positions. The escapement is remarkable. It is a dual direct impulse escapement, so twin escape wheels directly impulsing the balance wheel. A normal Swiss lever has one escape wheel, a lever between the balance and the escape wheel, and the lever locks and unlocks the escape while impulsing the balance. Well, here you have an alternating silicon lock that locks and unlocks the twin wheels, which are actually like a fabricated nickel phosphorus, and the wheels themselves alternate impulsing the balance. The result is less parasitic loss at the escapement, greater timing stability, that is precision, as well as extended power reserve. It's a highly advanced wristwatch approach to the natural escapement as originally envisioned by Abraham Louis Breguet. Now, there is more going on, make no mistake. The movement is wonderfully decorated. As you can see, both black polish, everything, for instance, the cock bearing, the balance, the screw heads, as well as the bridge for the rotor, that's black polished will turn black as I turn it flush to the camera. Optically smooth and executed to the highest degree of optical clarity. This is one of the toughest assignments in movement finishing. Now you'll also note when I turn the watch 
flushed the camera. The glint and the gleam alongside the bridges as well as the interior profile of the balance cock. This is mirrored englage executed on an immense scale. The edges are so broadly beveled that you do not need a loop to appreciate this watch. So while you will get more out of it if you buy a high-end loop of at least six power, you don't need it to appreciate what you're buying. What you're buying is exquisite, beautifully textured linear Cote de Genève aligned perfectly across the bridges. You'll note a true rose lathe guilloche cut on the winding mass and just below, and even micro perlage across the base plate. Interior angles, oh yes, at least five that I can count. The sharp cleft between two planes that meet two unglaged surfaces. You could see the interior angle around the center wheel across the bridge bearing the the barrels and the center wheel, and you'll also note the interior of the balance cock features four interior angles. Many Geneva Hallmark calibers will get away with one or zero interior angles. Though this is not Poisson de Genève, it is executed to a standard that will rival those that are. This is a phenomenal work. 48 jewels, immaculately finished, three-day power reserve, and exotic escapement. All of that with a travel-friendly complication in a versatile white metal case that you can and should wear every Every day. This is the Laurent Ferrier Galet Traveler in 18 karat white gold.